This month's edition of Lakeville Kids in Government is sponsored by retired police chief Tom Von Hoff, keeping Lakeville citizens safe and secure since 1980. 521, 522, 523, 524. Oh boy, there sure are a lot of apples here in this orchard. I just, oh, pfft. Oh. Everyone, it's time once again oh, for the Lakeville Kids and <laughs> Government Program. Kids and Government. Oh. <laughs> On today's show, join. Louis the dog as he discovers how they stripe parking spots in the City Hall parking lot on Walking with Louis. On Hank's World, Hank the Hog gets tips on trick-or-treating safety from his grandma. Lake Force Team 16 News Update has Ted Pickle finding out how the hot weather in August is affecting the city's trees this fall. And on how they do that, Mary Utter checks out how the Parks Department mows difficult to get at areas with an articulated mower. Ooh. <sighs> and I'm Roger Mildustain, <clears throat> your announcer. And now, here's the host of Kids in Government. <laughs> R.R. the Raccoon. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Lakeville Kids in Government. I'm R.R. the Raccoon, your congenial host, here in our program where we take a humorous and educational look at how government works. Hey, we're here at the Applewood Orchards that's just south of the Air Lake Airport, and ah, I smell apples in the air, so we're going to be going all over the apple orchard. So as I move to our next location, here's our first segment on this month's show with Louie the dog. Take it away, Lou! Who is that walking behind me? <laughs> Don't recognize her. Hey folks, Louie the dog here for walking with me, Louie the dog. <laughs> and I'm in the parking lot here at Lakeville City Hall. And as you can notice, <gasps> the striping here in the parking lot is somewhat inadequate. Well, guess what? It's faded after years and years. So we're going to restripe the parking lot to make it safe for all of our residents and employees. So let's find out how they stripe the parking lot here at City Hall and all over. Yeah! <laughs> Let's take a look. product of a wonderful up uh, oh you went too far too low this way back no no back this way to the left to your right more to your right where are you going get back here oh, 
Thank you. You're being very difficult today. Well, folks, here it is, the beautifully completed stripe parking lot. Now they've got lots and lots of more parking stripes to lay down, but we don't have time to sit here all night. <laughs> so I hope you discovered how they stripe parking lots all over the place, and especially here at City Hall. Hey, Louie the dog, here for walking with Louie. I'm gonna walk the line, folks. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Wordy Wolf, here for this month's Kids Quick Tip. And hey, I just want everyone out there to know that Mayor Mad Little's office hours have changed. They are on a new day and time. If you want to talk with Mayor Mad Little, you can see him on Tuesdays from 11 to 1. But first you need to call for an appointment and let's see, the number is, uh, I had it here, hold on. Hold on. Let's see here. Okay. I've got it here, hold on. 952-985-4403. You can make an appointment and you can talk with our mayor here in Lakeville. And oh, I just love being here at the mayor's desk and I've got the gavel and, uh, whoa! How you doing, Wordy? Mayor Matt Little, what are you doing here? Well, Wordy, it is 11 to 1 p.m. Uh, it's in that time frame that you just talked about. You mean it's I'm actually at... Tuesday today? It is Tuesday, you didn't know. Oh, I had no idea and I'm kind of sitting at your desk and... Um, yes, I'm, you are. Yeah. I'm, I'm here because... Um, um, oh, oh, the gavel! Why do you use a gavel during the council meeting, Mr. Mayor? Well, Wordy, I use the gavel to open meetings. That's yes. the official opening of meetings. It's the official closing of meetings. I have yes. to use the gavel yes. uh, on the table. But also, if someone gets out of hand, I bang the gavel to get their attention and get control back of the council chambers. Now, I haven't had to use it yet, but I think I'll use it right now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Uh. <laughs> Coon back here. Guess what? The owners of Applewood Orchards hired me on to polish up every apple here in the orchard. So <sighs> that's one of about a billion. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> hey, well, you know, it's October and October is not only time for fall apples, but it's also time for ooh, Halloween scary. <laughs> so let's take a look at this segment on Halloween safety with my good friend, Hank the Hog. Oh, sorry, I gotta get back to work. They're paying me two bits an hour. Oh, oh I'm gonna get rich. <sighs> yes, this is Hank the Hog. Oh, yes, Commissioner. Sounds good, I'll get right on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hank's world. Welcome one and all to this month's Halloween edition of Hank's World. And oh, I'm so excited because the month of Halloween means tricks or treating. Oh, I just love tricks or treating. However, I do have a confession to make. I've never gone tricks or treating. Oh, oh, I knew, isn't that awful? Well, I'm gonna do it this year, but I thought I better chat with someone to see how I get ready for Halloween and stay safe while I'm having fun. <laughs> so, first thing that I did was text some of my friends to get the inside scoop, but they texted back that they didn't have time to help me out. Rats. Then I emailed my dad. He can for sure help me get prepped for Halloween, but he emailed back and said he would Google Bing, Chrome, and Firefox any info and email me back a PDF. R-A-T-S, oh. Well, finally, I decided to go old school and call my grandma. Oh, it's always great talking to my grandma. I sure do love her. Grandma's been known to use a little too much perfume and 
I can smell that O.D. LeBacon even over the phone. Well, anyway, I told Grandma about my Halloween predicament. She stopped me and said, Don't worry, my little honey ham. I'll tell you everything you need to do. First, let's talk about costumes. Make it bright and reflective. Make sure it fits so you're not tripping on it. Skip the mask so you can see clearly and use colorful makeup as a substitute and limit accessories like wands, swords, and knives. Got it, Grandma. What's next? Secondly, when tricks or treatings, stay close to home. Don't allow kids to go door to door in an unfamiliar neighborhood. And establish a route and set a curfew. OK, OK, I'm home with my large stash of candy. I bring it into my room and hide it, right? No! Discard anything that's not sealed, has torn packaging, or looks questionable. Only accept homemade treats from someone you know and trust. Eating-wise, dole out a few pieces at a time and save the rest. How was that, my little honey ham? Did Grandma do good? Grandma, I told you to stop calling me that. It makes me self-conscious about my smell. Fair enough, my honey. Fair enough, Hank. You need to come and see me soon. I've got hard candy in the candy dish for you. Ooh, yummy, I love it! Love it. Oh, love it was nice it. to talk to you too, Hank. Love Goodbye! It. Oh, all kids love hard candy. Have a safe and happy Halloween, everybody. And yes, I am Hank's grandma. You figure it out. From Southwest Central Dakota County, in other words, Lakeville, this is a Lake Force Team 16 award-winning non-action 360-degree news update with Ted Pickle. Hello everyone, Ted Pickle rep what what's Go! Hello everyone, Ted Pickle here reporting for Lake Force Team 16 News Update. I'm used to being in the studio, so I'm a bit confused. We are out here at Antlers Park to discuss trees and what effect the hot weather over the summer has had on trees and what may be coming to get our trees disease-wise in the future. My expert is this way. Joining me to discuss this tree issue here in the city of Lakeville is renowned tree expert and environmental resource specialist with the city of Lakeville, Ann Messerschmidt. Ann, how are you today? <laughs> Very good. Now, Ann, the... <laughs> Ted. Ann. Ted. Ann. I'm Ann. over here. Why aren't you... Ann, I can hear you, Ted, but... I'm up what? here. Oh! Oh, there you are! <laughs> Everyone, Ann Messerschmidt with the city of Lakeville. Ann, how are you today? I'm good, Ted. How are you? Good. Now, Ann, the subject that we are here to discuss is trees, correct? That is correct. Now, it was a little warm. We had a warm stretch in August. What did that hot weather do to our trees in the area? Well, not only did we have a hot stretch in August, but it's kind of been years where we keep ending up in drought conditions. And trees, they, they're impacted by that, as well as other plants and animals, of course. But the trees definitely can get stressed out. And come August, September, you're really going to start seeing the impacts of the stress that they've experienced either with brown leaves, um, earlier changing color of leaves, a number of things. Very good. Now, this program will be seen in October, and What can residents do to uh, help see their trees to the next season? Well, even in October, you'll definitely still see changes in your trees. So something you can um, do is look at, look at the health of the tree. Can you tell? Does it look a little sick? Um, there's a couple of trees out here that um, we'll definitely see that they look a little sick. And you might need to consult an expert, um, a tree expert, in what they might have. Maybe it's a disease, maybe it's just stress, maybe it just needs extra water. Watering in the fall is extremely important. <laughs> and um, also fertilizing also can be very helpful. Mm. <laughs> they must have cooked hamburgers here on this grill last time. Oh, oh, sorry, Ann. Oh, still doing the interview. Thanks for paying attention, Ted. Now, we do know there may be an oncoming problem here in the city, correct? There's something called a emerald ash borer. 
It sounds very boring to me. What can you tell us about the emerald ash borer? Emerald ash borer is a beetle that is spreading disease to um, ash trees in particular. And um, it's actually in the life cycle of the beetle that really takes effect on the trees and the tree can Which live. Which beetle? John, Paul, George, or Ringo? <laughs> the emerald ash borer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, Ed, let's head over and see what an ash tree looks like. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, uh. Hey, look at me, Anne. I'm climbing an ash tree. Aren't you proud of me? You are a good climber, John. Where are you, Anne? I'm, I'm Anne. right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> Anne? <laughs> you made me fall out of the tree. <laughs> All right, what do we need to know to identify an ash tree? Well, to identify an ash tree, I mean, this is kind of an older tree, but you start seeing a diamond patterning in the bark. And the bark. The bark, <laughs> yes, that you were climbing up. <laughs> and then yeah. right up here is yes. an ash leaf. And even though it looks like several leaves, just that is considered a leaf. And it has the opposite leaves. And yes. they're very oval like that. So that's one leaflet. Um, and the branching of uh, an ash tree is opposite, which means they're right opposite each other on a branch where a lot of trees are alternate yes. but this opposite is like exactly opposite on a branch that oh, would be in the good. middle. Catch me! Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you fell too fast! You Sorry. didn't react fast enough. Sorry. Oh that's okay. <laughs> messed up my gherkins. Oh dear. All right then. Well I understand trees are an important part of our environment and we want to do what we can to keep them alive and thriving in our community. That's right, they're very important to us. Very good. Now underneath us here, there's a few websites that people can go to if they want more information about this emerald ash borer. Yes, and other diseases like oak wilt, Dutch elm disease, lots of things out there to look out for. There is. Well, thank you so much for your time, Anne. Thank you. And thank you for dropping me. No problem. Everyone, until <laughs> next time, this is Ted Pickle for Lake Force Team 60 News. Good luck. everyone, our other raccoon and I'm still here at the Applewood Orchards and hey, the kids have just got off the hay rides and oh, there's so much fun things to do here at the Applewood Orchards. Hey, up next here on Kids in Government, we join Mary Utter on this month's edition of How'd They Do That? Take it away, Mary. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to another edition of How They oh. <laughs> How They Do That. Oh, this is Mary Other folks, and today we're gonna find out all about an articulated moa. That's right, and we're gonna talk to someone from the Parks Department and find out all about an articulated moa. Let's find how they do that. <laughs> you gonna whap me? Ha <laughs> ha, you are so slow. Ha <laughs> ha you so yours. Oh. Do 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 da ba ba ba. And there it is, everybody. The articulated articulated mower. Hey, I'm joined today by Mark Cruzy, who is the park supervisor here with the city of Lakeview. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing really good today. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very good. Used my other cream this morning. I'm feeling great. <laughs> That's good. Now, what is the reason that the city is uh, using this articulated mower? Moa. There's a lot of areas in the city that we can't mow with regular machines because there's either a steep bank or there's an obstruction in the way, whether it be a guardrail, a fence, or something like that. And it's unsafe for our employees to be able to operate equipment on those on those situations. Oh, very good. Now, I see that it's kind of attached to a John Deere. We just love John Deere, as you know that on our program. And it looks like it kind of is attached to, well, it looks like an arm on a space shuttle. How does this work here, uh, here Mark? Well, you can see the arm on the, on the machine. It's in the middle of the tractor. 
and we um, it has different cylinders that allows it to move way out almost 20 feet out away from the tractor mm -hmm. and it can go up and over hills and it can it pivot the head so we can manage a whole bunch of different inclines and obstacles with this machine. Can it, can it go over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house? You go! And hopefully get there by Christmas. Ah, I love it, I love it. Now, do we have to worry about animals? You know, are you going to mow down some animals? Not usually. That's not a problem. Most animals are going to run from the loudness and the and the and how loud this tractor and mower get. They're not going to hang around to wait and see what it is. Excellent. Well, I'm tired of us gabbing, Mark. Let's see this articulated mower in action. Sounds good. Let's take a look. we have now discovered how they do an articulated mow and it is so cool it's actually moved me to tears so until next time everyone this is Marietta for how they do how they do that we'll see you next time folks miss me miss me now you gotta kiss me Mwah! see you later everybody move over girls I want to do some mooing Woof here, everyone. Ah, uh, did you know that October is Fire Prevention Month? Well, it is, and I thought I'd give you a quick safety tip in honor of FPM. Fire Prevention Month. Hey, keep plugs safe. Unplug all appliances when not in use. Follow the manufactured safety precaution and use your senses to spot any potential disasters. If a plug is overheating, smells strange, shorts out of spots, the appliance should be shut off immediately, then replaced or repaired. This one smells good. Well, folks, that's it for another edition of Lakeville Kids and Government. If you have questions on any of the information we've covered, please feel free to give us a call. Our studio line is 952-985-4418, and you can watch all the shows on LGTV online at www lakevillemn.gov. Well, we want to thank our friends out here at the Applewood Orchards for letting us have free reign and cause mayhem beyond belief here in the Apple Orchard. So hey, it's fall time, folks. Get out and enjoy the weather because pretty soon there's going to be snow. Ah! So we'll see you next time, folks, on Lakeville Kids and Government. Hey, I got to get on the hay ride. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. This month's edition of Lakeville Kids in Government is sponsored by retired police chief Tom Von Hoff, keeping Lakeville citizens safe and secure since 1980.